as I record this, oops, excuse me, as I record this video on um, my computer, the one of the most popular British business people on TV, media personality, is a, a man, young man called Stephen Bartlett. I think he's in his uh, early 30s, maybe late 20s, early 30s, so he's quite young. He has his own um, YouTube channel, which is called The Diary of a CEO. And, you know, CEO, Chief Executive Officer, The Diary of a Boss. Um, and uh, he he gives lots of information about being a CEO, but also he interviews other more famous people um, in business, like uh, Richard Branson and a lot of American um, 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 CEOs and media personalities. And anyway, he's very good. He wrote a book called 33, well, it's called The Diary of a CEO, 33 Rules or Laws of Business. And I read it. I think on an aeroplane flying from England to back to Japan, one of my last trips to England. And um, anyway, I found it very interesting and I tried to summarize the, what I thought were the 10 most important rules. So I'm going to go through those. They're in the lesson, but we'll talk about each one a little bit and uh, see if you can get something from this. It's, you know, not only for your English, but also for, um, Business knowledge. Um, anyway, okay, so number one, it says to master something, teach it. If you want to be good at something, teach the thing that you want to be good at. So that's certainly true for English. I've learned a lot about English by having to explain it to other people. But it could be not just language about anything, any skills. If you want to under really understand something, you have to teach it to somebody. Number two, keep commitments to yourself even when others aren't watching. This will train you to have strong mentality. Yes. The idea here is even if nobody's looking, you still do the right thing. So it's like trying to lose weight. You might tell your husband or wife, I'm going to lose weight. But when they're not around, you secretly have some ice cream. No, oh, that's bad. You have to be honest even when nobody's looking. Kind of a character. Number three, always prioritize your health. Health is the most important thing. That's not just for business, that's for life, right? Number four, make people feel something. Indifference is the enemy. Indifference means having no feeling and not caring. So this is about business. You want to, you want people to say, oh, I love that idea, or oh, I think that's terrible. And, uh, and then people will have an opinion. That's what you want. So even if they're angry at your company, what? Starbucks coffee is so expensive. Yeah, it is, but it makes you think, oh, is it expensive because it's good? Maybe. Um, that's number four. Number five, the frame matters more than the picture. You know, if you have a picture, the frame outside is more important. That's an interesting idea. I think in the book he talks about, that's like Apple... Uh, products. If you go into the Apple store, they only have like one or two things. They have one phone and a big lot of white space. And the what that suggests is, oh, this is such a valuable thing, this iPhone. You don't need anything else. So the frame, how you present something is more important than the thing that you're presenting. I mean, an iPhone is just a telephone. Well, uh, number six, you must outfail your competition. Failure is not a bad thing. Every fail provides useful information. So yeah, outfail your competition. It means make more mistakes than anybody else because by making more mistakes, you finally get to the thing that works very well. If you don't make many mistakes, you don't, don't learn. So accept that you will make mistakes and start making those mistakes and make them faster than anybody else. Interesting idea. Okay. Kind of the opposite here. Number seven, you must be a plan A thinker. A backup plan is a distracting companion. Don't have a plan B. Yeah, you know, we talk about plan A and then a plan B. Plan A, I will do this. But if it fails, I'll have plan B. He's saying don't have a plan B. Just focus on succeeding. 
Okay, because if you if you put any energy into plan B, then you probably will fail. Okay, number eight, your skills are worthless, but your context is valuable. Different markets will value your same skills differently. What this means is, for example, well, I'm a native English speaker, but being a native English speaker is not very special in England or in America. But take me out of England, put me in Japan, suddenly my skill to be, to be fluent in English is more valuable. People are happier to use me. They'll pay, my, pay for me to use my skills. So the context, the place where you're doing something is sometimes more important than the skill that you have. It's interesting. Okay, number nine, hire smart people to tell you what to do. Who is the best, best person to do this for me? Okay. Um, yeah, you should hire, I mean, give a job to people who are smarter than you. Don't have people who are not uh, stupider than you or not as good, good as you working for you. Have the opposite. Have people who can tell you how to be a better something. That's interesting. Um, so yeah, get get smart people to tell you what to do. Don't do everything yourself. Mm. And number 10, learning never ends. You're constantly learning. That's true. It's the same in language, isn't it? Okay. Um, let's see. I've got three questions for you to think about. Well, number one, were there anything, any surprises, piece of pieces of advice in the list? Anything surprising? Number two, what do you think is the most important advice for a CEO, for the leader of a company? And number three, what are your strong and weak points for being a leader? Okay, that's everything. Thank you very much. Please have a think. Okay, thank you.